Chapter 6 Pete's Narrow Escape As the plane started rolling forward, Pete and Diego cried out in alarm. Help me hang on to it, Pete, Diego shouted, as the plane inched closer and closer to the barn door. The boys tried to hold it back with all their might, but could not stop it. Suddenly, Pete saw a cowboy's rope coiled over a post. Quickly grabbing the rope, Pete lassoed one end of the tail of the plane and tied the other to the post. It worked. The plane was held firmly with the propeller just inches from the barn door. Diego ran around to the cabin and jumped in to turn off the motor. Wow, exclaimed Ricky, pale with fear. Thanks, fellas. I thought I was going to take off right through the barn door. As he said this, both boys' fathers burst into the barn looking very worried. Did someone start the plane motor? Mr. Vega asked quickly. Diego told how the accident had happened, and Ricky said, I sure learned a lesson. I'll never go near the instrument panel again unless someone big is with me. Now Mr. Vega smiled and asked, Would you boys like to see our ranch from the air sometime soon? Crickets, Pete cried. You mean take a ride in your plane? As Mr. Vega nodded, Ricky shouted, Yippee! And Pete said, That'll be neat. Thank you. After supper, Dolores ran ahead of the others into the living room. Now we'll have some Spanish music, she announced. We, we play and sing every night. The girl opened a cupboard alongside the, the fireplace. Why, it's full of musical instruments, Pam exclaimed. Do you each play one? Yes, Diego replied. We're the Vega Quartet. The visitors watched in delight as he handed a concertina to Dolores, a marimba to his father, and maracas to Mrs. Vega. Then the boy lifted down his own instrument, a beautiful, shiny guitar. That's super, Ricky whispered to Pete when he saw the guitar. As the Hollisters found places on the sofa and chairs, Mr. Vega nodded to his family, and they began to play the lively Spanish tune Valencia. Dolores' fingers flew nimbly over the concertina. Diego strummed his guitar, while Mr. Vega struck the tinkling bell tones of his marimba. All the time, Mrs. Vega kept the beat with her flashing maracas. It's almost as good as being in Spain, Mrs. Hollister said dreamily as she listened to the lilting music. The players switched to a different piece which Diego said was Jarabe Tapatillo, a catchy Mexican hat dance. Presently, Dolores laid down her instrument and took a large, fancy, trim sombrero and a pair of castanets from the wall. She attached the castanets to her hands. Then, laying the hat on the floor, she began to dance around it, clicking the castanets in time to the music. As the piece neared an end, she stepped close to the brim of the hat and daintily tripped around it. As the dance finished, the Hollisters clapped loudly. That was beautiful, Pam declared. Please show me how to do it while I'm here. Dolores smiled and promised to do this. Then the singing began, first Spanish, then American. The Hollisters joined in the American songs. My, I haven't sung so much since our glee club days in, in college, Mr. Hollister said, grinning at Mr. Vega when the evening finished. Wasn't it all fun, Pam said, tumbling weary but happy into bed. She and Holly were sharing the same room. The following morning, the children were up early and dressed in jeans and shirts. Truchess arrived to take the boys fishing. As they were getting rods and reels, Sue watched them, fascinated. Finally, she looked at the elderly man and said, Mr. Truchess, will you please bring back some Truchess so we can have Truchess for supper? They all laughed, and Dolores said that her little friend was learning Spanish quickly. I'll teach you some more words if you like, she offered. Pete, Ricky, and Diego followed Truchess to the barn, at the end of which were several stalls. The old herder went inside and brought out three horses. 
He introduced them as Spot, Pal, and Cutie. Then he swung Ricky up on Cutie's back and mounted behind the boy. Diego nimbly jumped on Spot and Pete climbed onto Pal. I forgot my special fish pole, Truchess announced. We'll stop for it. They went across a little plank bridge over a gorge some distance beyond the barn. Diego explained that this was an arroyo. During a flash flood, the rain ran off through it. The riders cut across the range and presently came to a low adobe building with green, red, and yellow painted gourds hanging over the doorway. When Ricky asked what these were for, Truchess explained that they brought good luck. I hope we have some when we're fishing, Pete said, as the elderly man dismounted and went into the house. He came out in a few minutes with a short, gnarled pole, mounted once more, and they all set off toward the river. Half an hour later, as the horses picked their way through a thicket of juniper trees, they suddenly heard the gurgling of water. In a few minutes, they reached the edge of the bank and looked down into the swirling stream. It flowed through a deep cut. Picketing their horses some distance back, Truchess and the boys baited their lines and cast them into the stream. Almost immediately, Pete and Diego had strikes. Beautiful speckled trout took the hooks and leaped above the surface of the water. What did I tell you, Truchess crowed. Cradle moon is good for fishing. You're right, Truchess, Pete cried excitedly as he reeled in the fattest trout he had ever caught. No sooner had he taken the fish from his hook than Ricky shouted, I've got a big one too. After they had put the trout in a basket, he added, Truchess hasn't caught a fish yet. Let's leave him a while and walk down the bank away. Okay, said Diego. Boy, that water looks cold, Pete said, as he hunted for another likely place to throw in his line. It is, Diego assured him. This river starts way up in the mountains of Colorado, and the water comes from melting snow. Pete walked on farther than the others. Soon he came to a narrow ledge which jutted out over the river. This is swell, he thought. I can throw my line clear to the center of the stream. As he did this, he heard Diego shout, Get back, Pete! That's a dangerous overhang! But before Pete could retrace his steps, he felt the earth giving way beneath his feet, and he slid helplessly into the icy water. When Pete's head bobbed to the surface in the churning stream, the boy could scarcely catch his breath, he was so cold. However, he struck out for shore, swimming as fast as he could. But every time his feet touched the gravelly shore, the swirling water carried him out into the river again. I'll save him with my horse, Diego called to Ricky. You go back to Truchas. Ricky obeyed, but he watched his brother fearfully. Why was Diego so slow? Actually, Diego was not gone long. He soon dashed up on spot and rode to the water's edge some distance downstream. By this time, Pete was splashing and floundering helplessly in the rapidly running stream. Ricky was fearful that his brother would be swept under. Diego dismounted and led Spot into the river. Suddenly, he slapped the horse, crying out, Get him, Spot! Get Pete! As Truchas and Ricky watched, the faithful horse swam toward the middle of the stream. Thankfully, Pete reached up and grabbed the saddle. Come back, Spot! Diego shouted. The horse turned in midstream and swam to the shore, with Pete hanging to the saddle and floating on the surface of the stream. Reaching the bank, Pete flopped on the ground to regain his breath. Truchess was waiting there with Ricky. I told you, the old man said, that the cradle moon is no good for children's adventures, only good for fishing. I guess you're right, Pete agreed ruefully, as he pulled off his shirt and trousers to dry them in the sun. I won't go on any more adventures today. I'll just concentrate on my fishing. The little group ate a lunch they had brought, then began to tell stories. Pete asked if Diego and Truchas had ever heard of a mysterious mountain in the vicinity, where there was a cave used by ancient doll makers. The two looked at him in amazement, then burst out laughing. 
Is this a joke? Diego asked. It sure isn't, Ricky burst out, and we're going to help some friends of ours find it while we're here. After more fishing, during which they caught the limit the law allowed, Truchas and the boys mounted their horses and started back for the ranch house. If you boys go riding alone sometime, Truchas said, beware of the giant monster that lives in one of the mountains. Pete and Ricky looked at each other in surprise. The giant monster, Pete asked, which mountain does he live in? Truchas pointed off to a distant peak. I think it's over there somewhere. The Hollister boys shot a glance at Diego, who to their surprise seemed to be taking Truchas' warning very much to heart. Diego, is there really a giant monster? Yes, he murmured. Then tell us something about him, Pete urged. As Diego kept still, Truchas told them that the monster lived in a cave and made a fearful noise. Pete's eyes grew wide when he heard this. I'll bet it's the same mystery mountain I was telling you about, he exclaimed. Never heard it called that, Truchas said. Tell me, Pete said, does this monster growl like a bear? Truchas shrugged, then said, don't go near the monster's mountain. I wouldn't want any harm to come to you. When Ricky and Pete asked a few more questions, Diego remained strangely silent, and the boys could tell from the expression on his face that they should not press him further. Ricky turned toward Pete and whispered, another mystery. Let's go look for the monster someday. Pete frowned at his brother and said he'd better not talk about the monster for a while. Ricky kept still, but decided he was going to find out more from Diego later. The horses trotted along in single file, with Truchas in the lead. Suddenly, the old man reined in his horse sharply and raised his right hand. The boys stopped as he swung down from his saddle and crouched on the ground to examine some freshly made animal tracks. The boys dismounted also and followed his gaze. Sheep tracks, Truchas announced. Suddenly, the old man spoke to Diego rapidly in Spanish. What did he say? Ricky wanted to know. Whenever Truchas gets excited, he always speaks in Spanish, Diego replied. He thinks these tracks were made by my father's lost sheep. 